How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a wonderful day, a fantastic day. Uh, dudes, I mean, today, it's, it's freaking hump day, dude. It's Wednesday. I'm freaking tired. <laughs> I want the week to be over, but at the same time, uh, this is my favorite part of the day, so I can't complain. I uh, hope everyone's having a wonderful time, my dudes. I found this uh, video. I wanted to go ahead and react to it today, my dudes. It's freaking awesome. I love seeing stuff like that. Uh, like this, uh, anime episodes that were banned by Tub. I was like, I've actually seen a couple of videos from Tub. Uh, never, never subscribed. So honestly, uh, I think it's about time I do that. Drop a like. And uh, let's check out this clip. I uh, We're going to be looking at some anime videos that have just been banned. I'm assuming we're going to see some of like, the crazier stuff. I, I, or at least I hope we see. <clears throat> I have like done, like done watched other videos or like done little, like, you know, looked up stuff myself uh, like in the past on the subject. But I never really, uh, 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 like, got like a list or knew much like like off the top of my head i couldn't really name any band episodes really besides like of course like the the didney the didney donald duck as as a nazi you know like, like that's obviously a band friggin you know but like stuff like that so i'm wondering i'm wondering what we're gonna see today let's get right into it my dudes i don't want to waste too much time go tub TV episodes is nothing new. Due to differences in regional cultures, distribution rights, and other related reasons, it's common to find entire shows or episodes that can't be aired in some territories. In this video, we dive into the interesting world of anime to find out more about six episodes that have been banned for one reason or another. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about anime. Now, I'm going to be honest with you Yay! guys, I didn't really grow up watching anime. Liar! Did you watch Pokemans? Yugi's? Sonic GX? It was Sonic GX an anime technically? I don't I don't know. I did have help. I don't know that one actually. I'll be on this episode out. And I'll let you guys know that there are six episodes on this list and three of them, half of them, are Pokemon. Pokemon just because I really like the show and that's, that's, that's anime. the closest I got to watching anime growing up. Closest. That, closest. That is anime. I don't want to be a fake. Like 110%. What are you talking about? Fan and be like, yep, I watch all these. No. Uh, just interesting interesting video concept yeah just quickly pokemon to is as anime as naruto now, what do you mean let's get into the topic pokemon episode 38 electric soldier porygon 1997 this episode titled deno senshi porygon is one of the most talked about when it comes to anime bands globally it by the way i freaking love porygon it aired in japan in december 1997 awesome. and it sparked wide-ranging concerns after causing about 700 people in japan to have different health issues including seizures. What? Some sources like Vice say that the number could have been as high as 12,000 kids. Still, Vice reports that about Whoa. 600 cases were actually genuine and that the rest of the cases could have been a result of mass hysteria from... That's interesting. What was the... How, what was up with the episode? It's Porygon. I know Porygon is like a... It's a, it's a Pokemon that was created... Like, out of computer code, literally, right? Yard talk by Japanese kids. However, even though there were cases of mass hysteria, it's not like those victims didn't experience genuine symptoms. According to CNN, the television network TV Tokyo sought the assistance of doctors, animation experts, and psychologists to find out why it triggered seizures in hundreds of children. On the specific day that it aired, a Tuesday, more than 700 people, mostly school kids, were rushed to the hospital with symptoms of vomiting convulsions, and irritated eyes, among others. A day later, on Wednesday, about 200 of those people, ages 3 to 58, were still in the hospital. What exactly triggered the attacks? Well, about 20 minutes into the episode, there's a four-second sequence where Pikachu attacks a group of vaccine missiles, and as he dead- Four seconds! And makes a thunderbolt, the explosion- Four freaking seconds for a seizure, dude! Causes red and blue lights to fly uh, rapidly across the- Whole day is gone! Whole week! Potentially, whole month! Life! God! For four freaking seconds of a Pokemon episode! The storyline behind the episode is that Ash and his friends find something wrong with the Pokeball, the device used to capture and transmit Pokemon. And in order to uh -huh. fix it, they have to go inside it. They are accompanied by Porygon, a com I'm sorry, what? ...computerized Pokemon. And once inside, they discover that Team Rocket and another Porygon were to blame. A battle then ensues. In the explosion scene, the flashes were bright strobe lights and had blinks at a rate of about 12 hertz for approximately 6 seconds. This is believed to have triggered photosensitive epilepsy in some viewers. Following the incident, TV Tokyo apologized to the public and suspended the program. TV I don't know why, I don't know why, but when he, when he, when he was like explaining the episode, I was like, why aren't you showing it? Show, I want to see it. And then I'm like, oh, right, I forget. <laughs> Right, about the, the whole, yeah, the, 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 the people with the seizures. Okay, got it. Japan began adding on-screen warnings against watching the TV too close to the screen and encouraging watching in well-lit rooms. There was such a huge stir that even the Ministry of Health in Japan got involved. The company behind the show, Nintendo, also experienced shocks as its share price fell by 3.2%. And video stores removed the Pokemon anime from their shelves. 
It took a four month break before the dust settled enough for episodes 39 and 40 to be aired. This episode was removed from circulation and has never been aired in any country since. An interesting fact is that the media dubbed the incident, quote, Pokemon Shock. This reference has been alluded to in other shows, such as The Simpsons. Yeah, Pokemon Shock. Get it? Because Pikachu. And South Park. Because he's a rat. Park. <laughs> titled The Ice Cave, was banned because of a character named Jinx and her racially stereotypical appearance. The storyline of the episode is that Ash and his friends go on a shortcut route to Blackthorn City, and after battling Team Rocket, Brock has a cold, and the gang ends up at a Pokemon Center. The nurse attending to Brock is Jinx, who has jet black skin, huge lips in pink, big eyes, blonde flowing hair, cleavage, and hips. Yeah, I don't know if they ever explained what was the deal with Jinx. This appearance was extremely controversial. For instance, yeah. Carol Boston Weatherford, a cultural critic and writer at News & Record, termed Jinx as resembling, quote, an overweight drag queen incarnation of Little Black Sambo, end quote. The Little Black Sambo reference was mirroring a racist stereotype from a children's book published in 1899 that was banned from libraries due to its insulting stereotypes. The book particularly caused a stir among American civil rights activists in the 1930s and 40s because the illustrations were said to elicit the idea of an African American as, quote, an unimagined subhuman black juvenile who was typically Goodness. outdoors, merrily accepting, or even inviting violence. And Merrily accepting or even inviting violence. Good, good gracious. In her article, Weatherford said, Now that, now that is freaking racist. Like, that's like full-blown, like, dictionary definition racist. That is like undermining an entire, like, just race of people for, like, literally no reason. Jinx clearly denigrates African Americans, particularly black women. So in general, this episode was banned from airing in the U.S. due to having blackface connotations. In some way, the appearance of Jinx, especially her face, is reminiscent of the Jim Crow era in the 1830s in America, where white performance in blackface played, quote, black characters that perpetuated a range of negative stereotypes about African Americans. Some of these stereotypes included being lazy, ignorant, overly sexual, criminal, superstitious, and even cowardly. These performers, often white men from the north are thought to have done so to assert their dominance over African Americans. The controversy around Jinx led to the character being made purple. Still, the Pokemon episodes The Ice Cave and Holiday High Jinx were not aired in the US and some other English-speaking countries. It wasn't until December 2011 that the episode was accessible to US audiences after it was put on on-demand services. Also, at some point... Wow, the little details that you don't think would have happened with live, like, like streaming and all that stuff. It's like banned episodes of anime that you just couldn't see before. Kids WB aired the episodes in a jumbled oh, order. Oh, Kids WB! Them landing on air around February, which is Black History Month. Warner so Brothers. it's clear through all the hurdles TV faces trying to make the episode safe for viewers that this episode's controversy might persist for years. Demon Slayer, episodes 1 through 18. Oh, really? 2019. I love Demon Slayer, dude. I'm such a huge fan. Uh, right now, I'm currently on Demon Slayer. My Hero Academia and One Piece, like that I'm actively, actively looking at right now, like stuff. Even though I'm all caught up. <laughs> but not Demon Slayer, I gotta catch up. Still, I gotta do the whole Swordsmith Village arc. Don't, don't, don't judge me. I, I like to binge it all in one go. So far, we've seen situations where episodes are banned. In this next episode, we're gonna be talking about censorship. Interestingly enough, it was for an entire season. The show in focus is Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yeba, an anime that debuted in 2019 and became really popular with global audiences. It has a really interesting storyline where the main character, Tanjiro Kamado, a teenager. I love, I love how you're talking about Tanjiro, but yet you have like a completely different samurai, like Demon Slayer's like three wives <laughs> up on the screen. To become a Demon Slayer. This is after his family is killed and his sister turned into a demon. He keeps getting better and rises through the Demon Slayer ranks. The show has four seasons so far, all available to watch in the U.S. What's weird Great is that the season. original Great season. episodes of season two are banned in China. The Why? The studio in China had to remake characters and give them additional clothing as well as body features. Why? Well, China has a strict policy on shows displaying or promoting violence and sex. And in this case, Demon Slayer Season 2 was... Oh, I see. Yeah, they, they, they don't like the fun parts about entertainment. Got it. ...said to be too sexual. An anime fan from China, through screenshots shared via Twitter, compared the images of Tengen Uzui's three wives, Suma, Hinatsuru, and Makio. In the original release available in the U.S. and other parts of the world, the woman's cleavages can be seen while... And yes, all three of them are married to one, one, one demon slayer. <laughs> and the guy's kind of a prick, but you know... This version, the cleavages are covered... He's got riz, apparently. Body. Other users also pointed out that the Chinese version of the characters had, quote, tamed body features... They really got, like, full-on, like, lo like long sleeves. Such as reduced breast size. 
This ban sparked conflicting reactions among the fans, with some being glad that China was taking action against how overly sexualized women in anime could be. Another perspective on the ban is that during the season, one of Tanjiro's enemies has very revealing attire. This happens when Tanjiro teams up with Sound Hashira to fight two demon siblings, Gitaro and Daki. I really hope I'm saying all these names correct. Well, yeah, because if a demon, if, if there's a demon completely inspired by the, the red light district of ancient Japan, definitely wouldn't expect them to have some kind of uh, illicit, explicit clothing on. Perfect. During the fight, <laughs> Toby, a sash that ties her kimono, Who's awesome. changes to snake-like weapons, and this means without the kimono, her attire remains to just in bra and underwear. It is thus alleged that the Chinese censors found Daki's bikini cut underwear to be too revealing for their audiences. A different version of the ban is that it could simply be China's new government policy that requires, quote, characters to be less sexualized while ensuring they aren't a negative influence on the youth or promoting values that might cause them to catch the gay. Whatever the reason, oh, it sucks for them. Okay? Wait, so you want children, you want, you want people to be less? Less straight, yet you want them to not look at sexy ladies? Or is it, or is the mentality you don't want sex, young ladies to look at sexy ladies? I'm confused. <laughs> the original. All I know is it's bad, because there's a lot less uh, uh, sexy anime waifus out there. Content. Waiting the Pooh strikes again, man. Can't Swear. You perceived the way the creators wanted you to see it but this one is interesting as don't like the way females are overly sexualized in anime so there's like a 50 50 on this one i guess cowboy bebop episode 19 wild horses 1998 another great anime based on the fan consensus and anime reviews is cowboy bebop the conversation yeah i can never get chaos to watch it he says he hate he hates old school anime like the old the art style so he, I just can never get him to watch Cowboy Bebop. It, I, I, it's one of the biggest things. Like that and, Lu and Lupin the Third. I want to get him to watch. Application, for instance, calls it a genre-bending storyline, claiming that it offers a pastiche of many international influences, including the mafia bits of American movies, Italian Western films, Japanese cyberpunk, and the martial styles common to Hong Kong movies. Yeah, but like most of it was just L.A. noir, like classic L.A. noir. It equally does a great job sampling of international music and overall shows that the transnational potential of anime. Now, with this great introduction, it might seem odd that the show had a banned episode, but yeah, Cowboy Bebop had one of its episodes pulled from airing, albeit temporarily. This also happened. If you guys aren't into L.A. noir, but you still want something with that sort of same uh, classic anime vibe, you can also uh, uh, watch Trigun with uh, 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 Bash of Stampede. But uh, not the new one. There's a new one that came out. I haven't watched it yet, but the, the old classic one is freaking sick still, dude. Despite freaking great anime. Being relatively short, just 26 episodes. The show popularly aired nonstop on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim in, in the 2000s. In 2003, however, one of the episodes, episode 19, titled Wild Horses, was pulled from rotation since it involved Space Shuttle Columbia, which had burned up upon re-entry. In Wild Horses, Spike returns to Earth and a spacecraft, Swordfish 2, and goes to get it fixed by Doohan, his friend, while waiting for a spare part for fixing the craft, Spike and the rest of the Bebop crew learn of a bounty in the area and so he takes the swordfish on the mission. The target then turns out to be a dangerous hacker and he manages to hack the navigational components of Spike's and Faye's crafts. While they triumph against the bounty, Spike's craft starts failing and Jet doesn't have a chance of getting there in time. Doohan suddenly comes to the rescue having restored an old craft. He rescues Spike from burning up. However, this restored craft has problems with the heat of re-entry, but ultimately the passengers make it back to Earth. This episode was first aired in the US in 2001. By coincidence, it had a lot of parallels with the real-life space shuttle Columbia on February 4th. Yo, that's a trip! Like, that's one of those coincidences, like, that's nuts! Like, ah, I wish I could, I, I had a good example of it. But there's so many, like, little, little coincidences that you just, you just wouldn't think, uh... Like, like, if you ever, like, I, like, uh, just off the top of my head, I remember reading a lot of stuff on the Titanic that was, like, super, like, they just happened to, like, not have, like, one or two boats, like, available at the time, but to, so that, like, like they were short on lifeboats. Like, it was a whole whole bunch of little coincidences that you're just like, what are the freaking odds that of all freaking times, of all infinity, like, the time is infinite, like, of all infinite time, you had to pick this one time to be the most, like, you know, <laughs> inconvenient. Like, it's such a trip. Three, Columbia was returning from a 16-day mission, and when re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, it burned up, killing all seven astronauts that were on board. Ugh, it turned that's out that brutal. the show had experienced damage to its heat protection tiles during launch and the damage went unnoticed. You can probably see the parallels between these two situations and understand why Adult Swim chose to remove the episode from rotation for a while. 
actually just like in the episode where i genuinely wonder how reentry would be dangerous these how they would even like be able tiles. to tell if those tiles have been damaged up due to damage to the insulating tiles on its left wing so was the episode banned forever well it turned out that wild horses was just the perfect homage to the space shuttle columbia and thus it bounced back stronger after the incident it thus continued being shown in reruns a fun fact is that other cowboy bebop episodes Cowboy Funk, Sympathy for the Devil, and Waltz for Venus were banned temporarily in the U.S. for different reasons, including showcasing a skyscraper. Good gravy, dude! This is how many episodes? Four episodes have been banned in the eye. Let's see. The building. Yeah. Sailor Moon. Episode 67, The Sea, An Island, Vacation, The Senshi Relax, 1991. Anime fans should be very- Dude, I used to watch Sailor Moon all the time, but it was out of order, so all I remember was being a big fan of Tuxedo Mask and, and Sailor Moon. So, like, just epic big I don't know. <laughs> I should probably go back and rewatch him as an adult now. I think it'd be dope. Very familiar with this show as it seems to be a top-tier anime in the community. For anyone else, just know that Sailor Moon has global acclaim for its great storyline, characters, and humor, and has been around since 1991. That is, including the manga. The specific episode we're looking at is episode 67, titled... And Tuxedo Mask. He forgot He he, he forgot to put Tuxedo Mask. I'll, I'll fix it for, for you. great storyline, characters, and humor... And Tuxedo Mask. It should, be, it should go right here. Yeah, that's where Tuxedo... You know what? You know, forget these. Like, just put Tuxedo Mask up here, I think. I think, I, I, I think it deserves to be up there. It's like mostly... In fact, why don't we just name it Tuxedo Mask, the show, and, you know, it, it features... And it's been around since 1991. That is including... <laughs> I freaking love Tuxedo Mask, man. He, there, there's, there are literally episodes where he just sort of shows up and immediately leaves, having done nothing. Like... <laughs> Literally so nothing. The we're looking at is episode 67, titled The Sea and I, I have saved the day. Goodbye. Relax. It focuses on Chibiusa's disappearance in the ocean over a fuss with Ray. Wow, was that a dinosaur? She ends up saving her from a volcanic eruption. Now, the episode storyline is pretty straightforward and may leave you wondering why it got banned in the first place. Well, the ban had nothing to do with the contents of the episode, but rather the rights. There were several players involved. In the U.S., the TIC right. Entertainment was responsible for the dubbing and distribution. The original. What do you What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, uh, I didn't quite catch that. You mind repeating the name of that company? To do with the contents of the episode, but rather the rights. There were several players involved. In the U.S., DIC. DIC. Ah, I see. Yes. Yes, that very well-known company, DIC. Yes. <laughs> entertainment. Sure. Entertainment was. That's how you pronounce it. Responsible for the dubbing and distribution. The I'm sure it's not pronounced something else. Boy, the Japanese animation studio. Now, since DIC wanted to do things its way, as it syndicated the series to American stations, it compressed it to 65 episodes and thus ended up cutting out a lot of content from the original version. They cut episodes 2, 5, 6, 20, and 42 from the first season. Just like, why? Like, I, I, I know he just gave us an answer and I didn't pay attention to it, but, uh... Just why? <laughs> like, just leave it as it is. Why, do you, why does somebody always have to, like, stick their fingers into something? And merged episodes 45 and 40. This is yours. And now I'm gonna mess with it. And now I'm gonna show it to people. Six. Then in season two, they simply cut out episode 67. This means American audiences ended up missing out on a lot of content. Yeah. Then, DIC's contract with the show ended at a time when it had taken off on Toonami, a Cartoon Network slash Adult Swim program. Which is the awesome. The contract carrier, That's why I watched Studios, it. was tasked with supplying more episodes of seasons three and four. And so they tried making an uncut version of the series, although they did so by American Network standards. So the first two seasons never got an uncut version, even in DVD format. The contract between DIC and Toy had made this impossible to achieve. As fans continue to demand for the uncut version, DIC contracted ADV Films to make the DVD versions. In the deal, ADV Films would- I feel like this is something that's very common in, in, in over here in Western uh, studio, especially in animation, where in Japan, it's like, if Toei Animation is going to do something, they just do it. They, they hire the, the staff, they make the stuff happen, they do it, or they partner with a studio that, that is well known to handle these kinds of situations. Whereas here, we just keep adding more and more companies to the mix until eventually no one knows what anyone's doing. ...was to negotiate with Toy, and then you... See, now you're negotiating with the... Th now there's three parties involved, they're all negotiating with each other and trying to figure out what they're doing. Like, this didn't need to get this complicated. ...the uncut tapes that DIC had originally received from Toy. However, a hiccup arose here. When ADV Films contacted Toy to negotiate to release the episodes, they realized DIC had lost the uncut version of episode 67. Right now, well, so you cut a bunch of stuff and then didn't keep it. Toy couldn't send them any new files because then. 
Is that company still up? If they're not, they deserve to be, uh, uh, like, not exist anymore. You guys are terrible. That would demand a new licensing contract, and Toy had aimed to let all global distribution contracts by third parties lapse. Fans just had to settle for a low-quality audio and picture in the DVD version without episode 67. It wasn't until a decade later that Viz Media got a deal to distribute the series in North America that fans of Sailor Moon got to watch the high-quality uncut version of episode 67. Was the wait worth it? The fact, however, remains that for 10 years, the full uncut version of Sailor Moon's episode 67 was banned from the US. It couldn't legally be distributed just because DIC lost the original copy. Pokemon. That's such a dumb reason. Episode 19, Tentacool and Tentacruel. This episode was banned in the US twice. The first ban was because it aired at a time when bringing down a skyscraper would be a sore joke. This was in 2001, when, if you know your history well, September 11th attack happened. This particular Pokemon episode follows Ash, Misty, and Brock on their- Oh, this is classic, classic Pokemon game. Okay. Adventure as they arrive in Porto Vista. That's like chubby Pikachu. Look at him. Look at that boy. Look at that chubster. Look at that chubster. Oh. <laughs> That's a little goofy looking, isn't it? A city. And are faced with an attack from Tentacool, aka the Zubat of the Seas, which are an angry group the of monsters. The Zubat of the Seas. And they follow their leader, which is a giant-sized Tentacruel. In one scene, a robotic voice says, it is known as the Gangster of the Sea, in reference to Tentacruel. And then Ash says, that must be the gang leader. In the episode, there's a city-wide destruction, extreme flooding, and hundreds of jellyfish monsters causing havoc. You can therefore see- Looking like an alien invasion over here! But the episode was banned because while it was just one of those Ash and Pikachu adventures, it would have rubbed Western audiences the wrong way. The studio airing it at the time, Kids Warner Brothers, refused to air it due to the scene where Tentacruel, the giant monster, destroyed a skyscraper with its tentacles. The second ban happened after Cartoon Network took over the series, started airing it well into 2005. This time, the ban was because of Hurricane Katrina. This was one of the most destructive hurricanes in U.S. history. It hit the Gulf. Dude, but I swear to you, the the United States American like audience is just a bunch of babies. I'm sorry, is that like too controversial? Like like. Like, y'all really can't put, like, oh, you, you, tragedy in real life, and then fictional freaking TV show. It has nothing to do with what's happening in real life. Coast on the morning. Y'all really can't, like, separate these two individual, like... Of August 29th, 2000. Like, come on, bro, grow up. ...about 400 miles across. It led to an estimated $100 billion worth of damage and had hundreds of thousands of people displaced in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. The effects of the hurricane were so devastating... Now, don't get me wrong, I understand that they're very tragic situations, very tragic circumstances. However, I feel like if you can't, like, uh, uh, I, I forgot the actual phrase for it is, but if, if you can't freaking, like, separate reality, reality from fiction, from a freaking TV show about, like, freaking monster put animals battling each other and, like, having, like, a weird freaking alien invasion, like, freaking grow up, dude. Stating that it would have been very uncomfortable to watch that specific episode. It would not be. It would only be uncomfortable if you literally tentacle, don't have Pokemon protecting like any 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 means of separating reality from from home from Nastina, who is trying to build a hotel oh! for the wealthy right above a coral reef that they inhabit. Nastina hires Team Rocket to exterminate Tentacool, but the device that they try to use in the extermination hits one tentacle and then turns him into a tentacruel. Knowing the storyline can even attack a bigger and deeper meaning to the episode's ban. For example, Climate Central attributed part of the hurricane's destructive abilities to wetland degradation, which is definitely a man-made problem. Sort of like nature striking back because we have meddled too much with our natural landscapes, like drainage patterns across the coast. What does that have to do with some crazy lady wanting to blow up a freaking coral reef and turn it into a freaking hotel dude come on if you guys like the video make sure to leave then what like. if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe with post notifications on like i'm not defending it it's just so weird like what a weird reason to get take those down and uh i stream sometimes so you can go check me out on cake yeah that's really it oh tubs on cake guys next time i upload darn it you can see now now i'm getting more convinced to go to kick people keep asking me what am i gonna do it am i gonna do it what's gonna happen Maybe. Maybe. Ayo, be sure to join the crew. Please like, follow, and subscribe. And hey, if you like that video, you should check out this stuff.